Hey guys, welcome to the video, welcome to the basement, welcome to the channel. In this video, I'm going to be making a jig for the lower control arm that I'm making for the new suspension on my Baja. I make my jigs so that it makes it really easy to tack the pieces together. This control arm, the right and the left, will be the same. I can use the same jig because I can just flop the piece back and forth. And then with this jig, with the way I'm going to make it, if I want to make some little corrections, if I want to make the control arm a little bit wider, a little bit narrower, or if I want to extend or shorten the wheelbase a little bit, the way I'm going to make this using screws, I can just pull the pieces back out, make my little correction, put the pieces back in, and it's good to go again. And it's also, doing it this way, really easy to get a very accurate layout of, your, uh, of the piece that you're going to make, and then put all the pieces in place so that the actual piece that you're taking or the actual piece that you weld together is very accurate. So the material that I'm working with here is three quarter inch masonite that I pick, just picked up at Home Depot. They sell them in four by eight sheets. I knew that I was gonna need a 30 inch by 20 inch piece. So I just had them rip it down for me at the store. You can get thinner masonite, save a couple of bucks, but this three quarter inch stuff really does a good job at holding itself flat, giving you a good surface to work off of. And there's more there's more material for the screws to bite into when uh, when you're screwing the pieces in place like I'm doing here. So what I'm doing here is I'm I'm laying out, you can see the drawing in the lower right hand corner there. Now I've already you know, I've designed this and I've cut out the pieces using Bentec, so I've kind of essentially built this control arm already. But what I'm doing here is making a jig to make it easier to hold everything together and so that when I weld these, I can weld more than one and they'll all be essentially exactly the same. If I built one and I kind of, you know, assembled it just freehand, and then copied another one off of that. At that point, you're kind of making a copy of a copy. And so if there's any imperfections in the first one, the imperfections can be carried over to the second one. And then if you continue that process, the imperfections can uh, kind of pile up. So if, you, if you're going to make more than, I'd say, two pieces, uh, templates are good. Or maybe if you're going to make two, but if you're just making one piece, I don't know that a template is absolutely necessary. But I know that I'm going to be making at least two, and there's a very good chance I'll be making more than two if I need to make some for other people or for other chassis that I'm making or what have you. So I wanted to go ahead and make a, make a jig for this one. So what I'm doing is I'm using that protractor and I'm laying this out exactly how the Bentec dimensions are telling me to so that all of the angles are exactly what they're supposed to be and the lengths are what they're supposed to be. And then if I need to make some corrections to my miters or my copes, I'll go ahead and do that so that the pieces fit into this jig because this jig holds everything exactly how it needs to be for my drawing. That little piece of wood that I keep moving around is a piece of wood that I cut that is half the diameter of the tube so that as I'm laying out my lines, I'll lay out the center line and then I'll use that little block of wood to mark out my first outside diameter line and then that's what I can use to set the first piece of wood. So I'll put the first piece of wood in there, I'll put the tube in there and then I'll just slide the second piece up against the tube and that gets it nice and snug on the tube and then it keeps the tube perfectly centered. So here is the finished jig. A couple things I want to point out to you. If you saw in that time lapse, I put some tick marks 
in certain areas here. The purpose for those are at some point in time, there's a very good chance that you're going to take this apart. And if you do, it's going to be very, very difficult to put it back together exactly like it's supposed to go if you don't have everything identified. So for little pieces, I'll just put a little tick mark on it. For other pieces, I just label it. So now this piece is ready to go. I can take this up to the garage. I'll cut off all of these templates and I'll tack it together. I like to use pieces that are lower than the stock itself. It makes it a little bit trickier when you're centering everything, but when it's that low, then you can get tacks not only on the top, but on the side as well, because at some point you're gonna have to flip this, take it out of the jig, and do some tacks and some solid welding as well. So with the lower pieces, you can get down in there and get some tacks that are below the center line, which really helps it hold it in place before you do any final welding. Nothing's glued, it's just screwed in place so that if I need to you know, take all of these out and maybe shift this up a couple of inches or out or move this to the left or to the right, I can just take screws out, remake these pieces and put them in there. So that's it for the video guys. I just wanted to give you a really short clip. I was about to make this jig and I figured this is something that might help some people so I wanted to just show you guys how I do it. I hope it's helping you, possibly motivating you to work on some of your projects. And I hope to see you on the next video. Take care.